Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will have a look at the Grand Prix cipher. The Grand Prix cipher is a French cipher invented by or published by Grand Prix. And it's today part of the standard of the ACA, the American Cryptogram Association, in their cipher list. And in this video, I will explain how the cipher works and how you can encrypt and decrypt using the cipher in Cryptool 2. I structured this video into four different parts. In the first part, I will give you an introduction to the Grand Prix cipher. Then we will see how the Grand Prix cipher works. After that, we will analyze its key space size and unicity distance. And finally, we will do it in Cryptool 2. We will encrypt and decrypt using the Grand Prix cipher. The Grand Prix cipher is a homophonic substitution cipher, presumably first described by A. de Grand Prix in his 1905 French book Cryptographie Pratique, which is translated to English Practical Cryptography. And as you can see here on the right side, I tried to find an image of A. de Grand Prix, but I even didn't find his or her first name and when he or she was born and died. The cipher encrypts plain text letters to two digit ciphertext numbers. How this works, we will see later. Grand Prix called it the Methode de Carde 10 10, which is translated to English the 10 by 10 square method. And he defined the method for squares of 10 by 10, but squares with smaller sizes like 9, 8, 7 and 6 can also be used according to ACA rules. And as I have already said, the cipher is part of the standard ciphers of the American Cryptogram Association, abbreviated ACA. And of course, we implemented the cipher recently in Crypto2, where you can use it now. How does the Grand Prix cipher work? First, you have to arrange 10 words or fewer, for example, depending on a keyword, one below the other in a grid. How this works, we will see. Each of the words forms a row. And the first letters of each word read from top to bottom should ideally form a recognizable word, which we call the keyword. Here you can see an example of such a table. It's the example grid as given by Grand Prix in his book. And as you can see here, you have digits from 1 to 9 and then the 0. And here from 1 to 9 and then the 0. And you have French words here like volupteux, inquietude and so on. Sorry for my bad French. And when you, when you read from the top to the bottom, you can see here vimoutier or vimoutier. And this is the keyword in this case. And here you can see how encryption works. To encrypt, find the row and column of the letter to be encrypted. The row number R and the column number C form the encrypted letter as RC. Here are some examples. If you want to encrypt E, you could use 3, 4. We can find the E here, 3 in the row and 4 in the column, so we have 3, 4. Same as for the A here, you have 4, 7 here for A, and for E again, 6, 6. And here you can see that this is a homophonic substitution cipher. You will find more cipher text symbols for the E and all the other letters. And here the E is 6, 6, here's the green E. And now let's encrypt hello world. We want to encrypt the H. We search for the H, for instance, in 0, 2, we have the H, we write 0, 2, then we have 9, 6 here, 9, 6 for the E, and so on and so forth. So we encrypt hello world to 0, 2, 9, 6, 8, 9, 1, 3, 4, 1, then we have a blank after the hello, and then we have 9, 7, 1, 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, 8, 7. This is hello world encrypted, but as you can see, you can find many other ciphertext encrypting the same since we have the homophonic substitution cipher here and we can choose different homophones for our letters. Now a few considerations. The letter frequency in the grid of course depends on the chosen words. If you use similar words then you have very similar frequencies and if you use different words you have more variety in your frequencies. Some consonants, especially if not using proper nouns, may be hard to include, for example, the X and the Q. 
And the cipher strength lies in its variety and unpredictability, so one should choose uncommon words when creating the table. Of course, best would be to generate a completely random table, but this is against the rules by Grand Prix and the ACA. So we use words for table creation. But more secure would have been to just create a random table. But clearly, this is also more difficult to memorize. Now that we know how the cipher works, let's have a look at the key space size and its unicity distance. And we use a 10 by 10 case. And in the 10 by 10 case, there are 10 times 10, which are 100 cells in the grid or in the table. With 26 possible Latin alphabet letters for each cell, there are 26 to the power of 100 for all the cells, which is equal to 2 to the power of 470 different 10 by 10 grids. So in this case, we have a very large key space. But remember, we only select English words and we don't use complete, so the complete grid space. Let's consider English has about 2010 letter words, then we would only have 2000 to the power of 10 grids, which is about 2 to the power of 110 different grids. Still a large number, but not as large as 2 to the power of 470. Now, based on this number, let's compute the unicity distance u. Remember, the unicity distance u gives you the minimum number of ciphertext letters that you need that you are able to obtain only one single unique solution via cryptanalysis. If you have a ciphertext below this unicity distance, you can find different English texts that all would make sense and you could not differentiate and find the correct one without having the original key. The unicity distance u is computed by dividing the entropy of the key space hk by the redundancy of the language, in our case English. The redundancy of a key space of size 2 to the power of 110 is 110. And the redundancy of the English language is 3.2. If we divide these two numbers, we have a unicity distance, and I rounded this number up, of about 35, which means Beginning with 35 letters, we can obtain only a single solution via cryptanalysis. So we need a minimum of 35 letters to be able to obtain only a single valid solution. Clearly, a given ciphertext can be solved like any other digit-based homophonic substitution cipher. For instance, with Cryptool2, we could use the homophonic substitution analyzer to solve the cipher. Now that we know how the cipher works and its key space size and unicity distance, let's encrypt and decrypt using the Grand Prix cipher component of Cryptool2. I'm here now in the start center of Cryptool2. I use the nightly build 9595.1. And if you want to use the Grand Prix cipher also, you need at least this nightly build version. And I want to create my own workspace with the Grand Prix cipher, so I click here on to create a new workspace with the graphical editor. Now we have an empty workspace. And the first thing I do is I search for Grand Prix and I will put two times the component onto the workspace since I want to encrypt and decrypt. Then we need some text inputs. I search for text here. And the first text input here is our plain text. And then we need a keyword for our cipher. This is keyword. And we connect these two components. The plain text goes into the first cipher component. This will encrypt. And then this output will go into the second cipher component. And this cipher here will decrypt. So we change the action here to decrypt. Then we have to connect the keyword. The keyword is the third input here. And then we need some words, some 10 letter words. And since I don't want to create my own words, I use the dictionary. The dictionary component here allows, yeah, as, as it says, it's a dictionary. It allows to get all the words of a language. And we have to change this to English here. And then we connect the string array output to the second input here, to the words input. And again, the second component here, words input. Then we need a text output component for our ciphertext. This here is ciphertext. And then we want a third 
or the second text output here, and this will be our decrypted plain text. Connect the second component to this one and the first component to this one. So what do we have here? We have a plain text that goes into the first component, gets encrypted, will be shown in the ciphertext text output. Also the ciphertext will be decrypted by the second component in the decrypted plain text text output. We have a keyword here and a plain text and a dictionary. Dictionary is for all words. We changed this to English. The component is set to encrypt here, the second one to decrypt. We have, we have also an option here to also use longer words. That means that it will also use when it finds a longer word, not 10 letters, but for instance, 11 or 12. These words are also used, but then truncated. And you have also the option to only use words with the exact length. And then we have unknown symbol handling. That means when we have a symbol that is not part of the alphabet. So we right now stand by standard use the Latin alphabet. It will ignore the non-Latin alphabet letters. So they will or it will leave these unmodified in our cipher or plain text. We can also remove these or replace these with the um, question mark, but I prefer to ignore them to leave them unmodified. Now we need a nice test plain text. So we have hello world. This is a test of the Grand Prix. And this won't work, so we change this from the E with the accent to just an E. Cipher component in crypt. To two. And since we also have no digits in our alphabet in our words, we have to write two instead of writing the digit two. Then we need a keyword. And finding a keyword is quite difficult since when I use a keyword that selects words from our dictionary that don't contain all of the words needed for our text, we will have a problem. These words can't be encrypted. So we have, for instance, keyword and then let's say x, y, z, and q, or let's, let's write x, z, q, with the hope that we will find words containing all of the words or the letters that we need for encryption and decryption. So let's press play. Yeah, and our keyword is good enough. It selects words containing all the needed alphabet letters. Here you can see the ciphertext consisting of digits, the unknown symbols, so symbols that are not part of our um, plain text alphabet are just kept here and unmodified like spaces, comma, and so on. And here we have the decryption, hello world. This is a test of the Grand Prix cipher component in Cryptool 2. If you would change here to remove, we would just have digits without the unknown symbols. And it's of course <laughs> really hard to read in the decrypted plain text component here. We could also replace if you want to see where an unknown symbol would have been. So you have here question marks. But as I said, I prefer the ignore. And you can also see here every time we provide a new cipher or a plain text here, our cipher text changes. I just press H again. And you see every time I change or provide, the, and it's the same plain text, you can see that the cipher text is modified. And this is because we have a homophonic substitution cipher where we have options for each of our plain text symbols. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show in this short video. I have shown you how the Grand Prix cipher works. We have had a look at the key space size and unicity distance and computed these. And finally, we created a workspace in Cryptool 2 using the new Grand Prix Cypher component to encrypt and decrypt text. I hope you like what we did. If yes, please give me a thumbs up. That really helps me to grow the channel to make Cryptool 2 more popular. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please also do so. This also really helps me. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.